Aloha and welcome to Don't Just Age, Engage. This is Think Tech Hawaii's program on aging and having an extraordinary elderhood. I'm Larry Grimm, your host. And we're looking at why is it so important for aging members of our society, extraordinary elders, I like to call us, should be involved in social justice issues. Marion Heidel was with me last two weeks ago with my last program. And I asked her to come back so that we could discuss not just the reason for them us to be involved, but the content of what's going on. Some comment, Terry, from her and from me this morning on what is happening in our world. Marion, welcome again. Thank you so much for joining me in this dialogue. I uh, am grateful for, for you and all you've done. Well, thank you uh, for asking me. I, uh... Hope that this is um, going to be fine. <laughs> I think it will be. I think it'll be great. <laughs> um, there are plenty of concerns. There are plenty of issues. I like to start off actually kind of with a list of issues that we may touch on as having been our involvement in the, our past or our involvement presently when we consider seeking justice. And I wondered if... Um, I wonder, uh, Mike, can you put those up for us, uh, issues? Some of the social issues that we find important. Disarmament of nuclear weapons is one. Um, the Middle East, I've been involved in, very much involved in my life. Um, Palestinian right to return, for one thing. Um, white supremacy has been a, an ongoing concern of mine, uh, and um, gun regulation, of course. Those are four, three, four, four. And what have been some of yours, Marian? Uh, well, housing in different ways, um, transitional housing, housing that's for uh, something that uh, low income can afford and um, and a whole thing about what's affordable housing. You, most of our housing is not affordable. Um, so housing, uh, criminal justice system, uh, reforming how we um, deal with our uh, uh, people who have uh, been imprisoned and um, uh, hunger, the whole hunger issue and food supply, lots of environmental uh, problems. And uh, I didn't list this, but um, immigration and the treatment of immigrants. Yes. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> that sounds like enough. <laughs> and I would add a women's health care if possible. Oh, that's right. We didn't get into that too much last time. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a great list. And, and uh, it's a list of what we have been involved in, you and I, at various times in our lives. And um, that also look at the, the commonality of, of some of the concerns. However, let's start a step back, Marianne, okay. and say, what motivates you and me? What, what motivates you? to be involved in social seeking justice? Well, I suppose it's because of my spiritual or religious life. Um, as I said last week, um, I, I think we Christians have been um, instructed or, or moved to bring the kingdom of God on earth and not just up there in the clouds in heaven. And, uh, and and so uh, and because of life experiences i've been um led to be a compassionate person i guess you'd say and huh. uh, trying to find ways to express that compassion and help change to, uh, the, the world at the same time you know some of the wonderful yeah just, yeah I, I and for me it's similar i I, uh, it, it's throughout the biblical material literature, we can see evidence in Micah, the prophet Micah in the Hebrew text, so, which I, I love, it just propels me forward, seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. 
And I, that to me summarizes so much of, of what uh, motivates me to, um, to, to be involved in, a, uh, in the social realm. Uh, we have a transformative view of the possibility of the spirit to transform our material world into what you have called and named the, the kingdom of God or the realm of love and peace and justice. We really believe in the transformative power of, of that inner compassion that you mentioned and that love that we have, that it can take the shape of, it can take the shape of, of, of law. It can take the shape of, of social organization. It can take the shape of, of, um, of care and, and provision for people. And that's- oh, It really needs to. <laughs> take it uh, the shape in those forms something you know that's just beyond what i can do yeah. as far as changing something and and in this way when in this vein we say if you grow up when you're growing up you really have started growing up when you take responsibility for the shape of society that you're going to be a part of and that you bring those um values into that you share with other people into shaping society. I love Margaret Mead's Margaret Mead's quote that's been often quoted: "Never, never doubt that uh, the world can be changed by a small group of committed, devoted. I'm paraphrasing, devoted uh, individuals." Uh, she said, "Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing else has ever changed the world except that." So. Um, it's not something that is an individual going to change the world, save the save save the world. It really is a collective, um, mutually enge uh, engaging um, activity that we do with people that uh, share some of the same vision. Now that that's true of whoever may share visions. Um, you and I fortunately share a similar vision. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I'm for, I think it's fortunate we do. Part of that is women's health care. Let's get into women's health care briefly. Um, not, not that it doesn't de deserve a lot of attention, but we have a couple of other things that are pressing as well. Um, for me, I was when I was in Houston, no, no, I'm sorry, when I was in Denver, uh, Colorado, serving in a congregation in Lakewood, Colorado, I had the good fortune of, uh, of being um, president of the Religious Coalition, Colorado Religious Coalition for Reproductive Choice, and served three years on that um, board as president. I really, really enjoyed it. We worked closely with with um, with the uh, Planned Parenthood and doing everything we could to educate and to empower safe abortion provision for people in Colorado. Um, and I'm proud to say that today, one of the few states that is set to receive people, uh, women who need abortions, is Colorado. Um, have you been involved directly in some of the women's provisions? Um, no. <laughs> um, I, yeah, when Roe versus Wade came up, I, you know, I had to think about that because basically I, uh, don't approve of abortions. <laughs> um, I I wouldn't like to have one myself. Uh, although there has been a time or two where I thought if I was pregnant, I'd have to tell my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. and I, I just that would be a very difficult thing, and I'd be very tempted to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. But what I don't like um, is that so many young girls are desperate to have an abortion because they don't want to have one for whatever reasons and so they'll go off to somebody who's more of a quack or doesn't do uh, safe abortions and and that takes precedent for me over um, you know saying no I don't believe in abortions mm -hmm. at all yeah. um, um, so I'm, I'm probably not on the same strong side you are, but I, I am supportive. I don't, I haven't contributed, uh, I think, to Planned Parenthood, but, um, but I uh, appreciate the work they do, um, trusting that they are 
uh, giving girls different options, educating them, um, helping them think about, you know, the, the preciousness of life and whose life is precious. Hmm. Um, and of course, that can make the girl even more uncomfortable. <laughs> but, uh, but I, I think, um, and I, and I don't, uh, what I don't like is just getting an abortion for the, um, because it's easier um, than, than considering, you know, just willy nilly. <laughs> now we're talking about motive, motivation and, yeah. and re reason. Mm -hmm. um, and that comes into the decision making process for every woman. I, I do want to say when I was involved directly in the, uh, in the, in the board of the Colorado Religious Coalition for Reproductive Cho Choice, which involved leadership from from all of our denominations, Jewish and pres and uh, and um, Jewish and uh, um, Christian. However, um, of course, we didn't have the Roman Catholic Church involved with us. Um, but when we were involved with that, uh, a large percentage of of uh, recipients of abortion were married women uh, over thirty. Mm -hmm. And so we're we're not just talking about young girls who are um, facing their mothers or fathers, possibly as as frightening a prospect as that would be. We're talking about women in various situations who are um, considering what their prospects are and what their life is about. Uh, I um the key for me, Marianne, when I was getting involved in this, was moral agency. And uh, how dare I think that women are not moral agents capable of making those decisions, choosing with whom they will make those decisions, and then making them. So um, for me, the provision of choice really went along with this sense that God is involved in, in everyone's life, and the, uh, and the women who are considering this question are really taking responsibility along with um, others in their lives to discern some sort of guidance beyond themselves. It, it's important, as, as you did say, and I agree, to provide some sort of some provision for safe, a safe. Well, um, well, and I think, you know, what, what your, your group must have been doing, too, is um, what I would hope that some, uh, that most um, especially when you're talking about mature women, I mean, <laughs> more than just teenagers, um, that they do have the chance to, and guidance of somebody to help them work through that and make the decision. And, and um, that's what I hope. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I agree with you that, uh, that way. I know um, I haven't, been involved or voting on that kind of thing, except that if I was asked to answer, a, a, um, what do you call it, a petition or something, or what I feel, I, and they asked me about, would you vote for Roe versus Wade, I would put yes. Mm -hmm. And I, but I do hope that um, in that, and I haven't been involved, you know, and meeting with any groups like that, um, where you would discuss, you know, a group of women would discuss and share their different mm -hmm. feelings and their attitudes. Yeah. I, I saw one uh, one meme on Facebook that I, I kind of liked during Mother's Day, and a, a 30 something woman was standing in front of a perfume counter. This is a cartoon uh, drawing, and says to the card, the woman is standing at the counter with a, a bottle of perfume, ready to squeeze it. And the 30 something woman says, my mother for Mother's Day wants to be reassured that her activism of her youth was not for nothing. <laughs> and I, I think this, this um, the leak from the Supreme Court was so shocking and stunning uh, those of us who have been involved in the past and concerned about it for uh, to provision for safe women's health care choices in all kinds of ways, um, just were, were stunned that this could have happened, that we didn't think it was going to could, could be overturned like this. 
And uh, yet we do see that half of the, almost half the population was, has been active for many years towards this point. Mm -hmm. um, it's, there are leaders who are, um, are taking position, but they're also taking the position anti-right anti to choose position, but also there are those who, who, uh, <clears throat> who didn't, um, we, um, we didn't think we we're gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a kind of shocking, and I think we're stunned into silence in some ways, but there's got, there is a movement, a counter movement to that that's surfacing, and we'll have to see how it goes from here to, um, but I certainly support a woman's right to choose, a woman's right to exercise her moral agency, and the, the right of our society to provide safe and, and, uh, safe and secure abortion uh, procedures. And we also, in addition to aborting a pregnancy just for that purpose, it also is a way of uh, dealing with other medical issues like ectopic, mm -hmm. I think it's called ectopic pregnancy. Um, there are other moral, there are other uh, other medical issues a woman faces, and she has to have abortion <laughs> as a way of addressing them to save her own life. Right. Right. I, I agree with that, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Well, most recently, of course, today, um, gun violence. Uh, Marianne, what are you thinking about this day? Well, I, I, I mean, I've been horrified <laughs> ever since I discovered that people could buy guns and, and uh, automatic rifles and repeating rifles and all the things that are supposed to be, have been saved for a real war, uh, which I don't <clears throat> like as a way of deciding things either. Uh, and I'm, I'm strongly against nuclear um, weapons. And, um, and uh, I pref I'm, I'm hoping they will work towards um, discussion and diplomacy and, and um, that kind of thing for settling disputes. Um, but to have it, you know, uh, be so that kids can buy them, adults can buy those kinds of things. I, you know, I can understand uh, buying a rifle to go hunting. Although there are a lot, lot of people, of course, that don't like that because you're, you're c killing an animal's life. Um, and they're mm -hmm. vegetarians <laughs> uh, because of it. Mm -hmm. But, um, but, you know, just having a gun, in your house to defend yourself i don't uh, i don't like that and especially no. now that pe people are using it yeah. on other people no. yeah yeah uh, it doesn't sense at all my understanding of a crime if i remember my clue game correctly <laughs> yes was it took a you had to have a motive you had had to have the means and the opportunity uh -huh. <laughs> and had to be able to prove that in court. <laughs> <laughs> on the board. <laughs> well, it, yeah, on the board there. <laughs> well, it seems to me that what we're doing as a society is that we're providing the means. And we're providing the opportunity. I think we've got to take responsibility for the fact that we do that as a society. And uh, we have 400 million guns on the street now. That's up three. That's up from three hundred million five years ago. Um, What's our population? That's a gun per <laughs> person. More than one gun per person. That's right. And um, the um, there have been since Sandy Hook. Excuse me. Take me a minute here. Since Sandy Hook, there have been three thousand eight hundred and sixty-five more shootings hmm. since Sandy Hook. I remember Sandy Hook? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're going to make sure that's the last time that ever happens. <laughs> yeah, remember the, the phrase, never again, never again will humanity be subjected to genocide unless they're Palestinian or Yemeni or uh, some other <clears throat> um, uh, what other uh, uh, Shi'i Muslim? That's just crazy. The kinds of tribalism that drives people 
to, um, to kill. Um, I don't know if today was a hate crime, but um, certainly it seems like the, the, tops, the murder at Tops in, in Buffalo, New, uh, New York, was a hate crime. Um, targeting African American men and women who are shopping at going the one the one grocery store available in that sure. desert uh, food desert of that that community. Uh, so, you know, all these are such setups. And I think I think one of the things I appreciate about about our age aging pr uh, process, Marion, is that we're able to see systemic issues or these issues are systemic they're not just one individual who gets crazy and does something weird there are there are several variables that are involved that come together in a confluence and a flow and um part of that like i said is providing the means and we provide the means we provide the opportunity to purchase the weapons we provide the the building of the weapons, we provide the ammunition availability of for those weapons. Then we make the opportunities available when we don't screen well enough. I I don't know all the all the answers to, to it, Marion, but I know there's some way that we've got to commit to getting those guns, getting guns regulated and off of the streets and out of the hands of people who don't know how to control their emotional life and trauma life. What other issues have been very important for you? We haven't talked about the criminal justice system. Tell us about that here in Hawaii. Well, you know, our, our latest uh, thing that I've been involved with is, well, I've always thought that um, we should be um, giving folks in prison the opportunity to um, change their ways, to transform themselves, and and some places do, and some places don't, um, and um, so it it should be uh, giving those kind of opportunities instead of thinking he's got to be punished and he's got to be, um, you know, mm -hmm. and then when they get out, especially, they need help. Because uh, they've lost their jobs, they're mm -hmm. maybe um, they don't have a place to live. Um, mm -hmm. They don't uh, uh, have even things like their uh, identity card or a driver's license anymore. Um, some of the same things that the immigrants have to worry about. Um, but you know, having programs that that they can go into to help them. Um, that should be done rather than uh, just punishment. Um, some of the society, yeah, reassimilate into society. Yes, uh, instead of feeling marginalized once they get out of prison. And you know, it's too bad we uh, we're having to send them away to another state because then they're completely separated from their families. Their families cannot visit them. Uh, I don't know how many get family visits now, but um, I remember, oh gosh, way back in the 80s, I guess, that uh, we had a program with the women's prison up here where um, uh, uh, for a while, we not only had some of the uh, pris prisoners who were allowed to be able to come to church, but also we took the trouble of trying to get uh, opportunities for the mothers who are there to see their kids oh wow so, so between the, i think the rotary and some of the churches where they put up a playground there and um and in such a way that you could they could meet together and see their kids and have some time with them and uh, yeah, I, think, yeah. I think the men need that too <laughs> yeah absolutely and your compassion seems to seems to really empower you and energize you in those particular kinds of concerns, relational yeah. concerns that the people experience. Well, and I, I, I feel, uh, I feel bad about people who have had their uh, sons and daughters killed on the streets, and then the guy has to go to prison, and they're just, you know, that seems to be the only way that um, that the 
the families of the victims can feel like um, clo there's closure, <laughs> mm -hmm. and that and um, and that uh, he's getting punished like he should be. Yeah. But, For every uh, every issue that we listed there, Marion, I know I, I have um, been reminded in the past that these are not issues; these are people. Mm -hmm. These social issues are people, individuals and families and networks of love and concern that are affected by the, the uh, what we call the issues. And we're not gonna get to all these, just have a half an hour, but I am so grateful that you have been a part of this. Thank you. I've really liked having this kind of conversation with you and have been wanting to do it actually since I arrived in Kailua to go to Christ Church Uniting Disciples and Presbyterians. And you've been gracious to do it with me here. Thank you. Yeah, well, um, I just think that whatever uh, uh, whatever age you are, that, that the best thing you can do is to educate yourself about yeah. different, these different issues. Absolutely. Um, then you'll feel like you're making a more of a fair testimony if you do take the energy and bravery to send testimony to the legislature if they're working on something um you know that has to do with these issues well stated uh, educate <laughs> thank you marion okay. educate and be educated yeah. thank you everybody for joining us this is larry grimm host of don't just age engage encouraging you to engage in your life and your elderhood and make it extraordinary and i'll be back in two weeks with the next show thank you so much for participating and i wish you aloha Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.